Hey everyone, and welcome to this video on balancing binary trees. In this video, I'll be going over how balancing a binary tree works using this visual representation. And then I'll show you how to code it up in Python. Let's take a look at what we have on screen. We have an unbalanced binary tree and we have the balanced variant of that binary tree. The reason we know that this left tree is unbalanced is because per definition, a balanced binary tree has a maximum difference in height of one between the left and the right subtree for any subtree in the binary tree. On the left, we have a subtree which reaches a depth of four, whereas on the right, the subtree reaches a depth of two. This means that the difference between the depth of the two subtrees is two, thus the tree is unbalanced. An example of how we might balance this binary tree is as follows. And as you can see, all the numbers from the left unbalanced binary tree are also in the balanced binary tree. The balanced binary tree has this left subtree, which goes until depth three, and the right subtree has a minimum depth of two. So the difference in depth of these subtrees is one, and thus the tree is balanced. An advantage of balancing binary trees is that we might find items faster when performing a binary search, which we covered in our last video. If we look at the unbalanced binary tree, we see that the worst case amount of steps to find an item is four, since we have to traverse five, three, two, and one to get to its maximum depth. If we look at our balanced variant, we can see that the depth is only three, and thus the maximum amount of steps to find an item in that binary tree is three. Let's take a look at how we might go about balancing the tree on the left. If you look carefully, you can see that from left to right, all the numbers in a binary tree are always sorted. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six. One way that we could balance a binary tree is as follows. We could grab this list, grab the middle number, and make it the value of the root node of our new balanced tree. Once we did that, we can give everything left of the middle number to the left side of the binary tree and everything right of the middle number to the right side of the binary tree. Creating the left and right subtree goes in the same way. For the left subtree, we grab the middle number in the list, which is two, and we will give one to the left subtree of the left subtree and three to the right subtree of the left subtree. So we add the middle number and we add one as its left subtree and three as its right subtree. Let's do this for the numbers on the right side of the tree. After adding the six, we see five is on the left, so we pass it to the left subtree of six. As you can see, we now added all the numbers from our unbalanced binary tree. And because of the method we used to create the new tree, we have a balanced binary tree with a maximum difference in depth of one. Let's take a look at how we can implement this as an algorithm in Python on a recursive binary tree class. In our Python code, we define the recursive binary tree class with a function to add values to the tree and a function to return the ordered list of all the values in the tree which is the list we used up here in the diagram. Finally, we have an implementation of binary search, which we did in our last video. We then create an empty instance of our tree and we add all the numbers in an order such that we create our unbalanced binary tree from our diagram. Now we can run our program and print the ordered list to see if it corresponds with the ordered list we expect from the diagram. As you can see, here are all the numbers one through six that we expect from the diagram. Let's start by creating a function called balance which someone using a binary tree can use to balance our tree. We create a function balance, which doesn't take in any values. The function balance calls another function we're gonna make, which is called build balanced, which takes in the ordered list. Let's now create the private function build balanced, which is gonna build our tree according to the ordered list, just as we did in our diagram. Let's create the function, it takes in self, but it also takes in the values that need to be placed in the tree. Now we define all the base cases of what we have to do depending on what amount of values we receive. If we receive no values, or in other words, the length of values equals zero, then we can say that the tree root value equals to none, and the left subtree equals to none, and the right subtree equals to none. Let's now describe the case for when there is one value passed as values, like in the case for this one over here. If the amount of values we get is one, then we set that value equal to the value of the root of our tree. Self.value equals values at position zero. 
and we say that the left subtree equals none and the right subtree equals none. After describing what to do when we get one value in our list to balance, we have to describe two more cases, namely what to do when we receive a list of two values, aka which one is the middle value, and next we have to describe it for a list of any length of values. So let's go to our code and describe what we want to do for two values. If the amount of values is two, then I prefer to do what we did in our diagram. As you can see, when we have two values, I pick the second one as the middle value, because then the leftover value gets placed on the left, which looks more natural in an unfinished tree than having a node on the right. But it really doesn't matter, because both will give a balanced outcome. So let's say that the root value of our tree equals two values at one, which would be the six in the diagram. And let's then say that the five has to go to the left subtree. So we say self.left equals to a new binary tree. And on that binary tree, we say build balanced with the values on the left. After doing that and looking back at our diagram, we saw that there is no number on the right. So we can once again set our right subtree to none. Self.right equals none. Let's now make the final case for any amount of values larger than two. In our diagram, this would be the case for one, two, and three on the left side, or the case for the entire list. As you can remember, we picked the center value. So let's determine what the center of our values is. Center index equals to the length of values divided by two and rounded down. After picking our middle value, we have to determine what is the left side and what is the right side? So in our code, we'll call the left side ls for left side and rs for right side. Since this is the center index, our left side is equal to the values until the center index, but not including the center index. We then determine that our right side is also equal to values from the center index plus one, because it's inclusive till the end of the list. So once again, if we pick as a middle number four, for example, that means its index plus one will be the right side and everything up until but not inclusive the four will be the left side. Let's now set our self.value, self.left and self.right to set the root value and to set the left and right subtrees. Self.value equals values at center index. Self.left is equal to a new binary tree on which we call balance for the left side. And we do the same for the right side. Perfect. Now, in order to finish up the function, we have to return self, because as you can see over here, we would like to construct a new binary tree for, for example, the left subtree, and then we straight away want to call build balanced. And because we want the left subtree to be a binary tree, the build balanced function must return a binary tree. So after doing either one of these options, we return self. Let's now test our balance function to see if it works. In order to show you that balance works, I will use this path function, which I will show you how to create in the next video. What the path function does is it does the same as search, so we can say path one, and it doesn't only return that one exists in the binary tree, like it would do with search, but it traces the route that it used to find one. So in the case of this unbalanced binary tree, we would say the path is five, three, two, one, and thus the path has a length of four. Whereas in this balanced binary tree, we would say the path to one is four, two, one, and thus the path is shorter because it has a length of three. Let's go to where we initialized our binary tree. We create a print that says the steps to the number one in our tree is equal to the length of the path of finding the one. So this will be five, three, two, one. So we expect a length of four. What we will do next is balance the tree using our balance function. And after we've balanced the tree, we will do the same print statement again, hoping for a different path length, namely four, two, one, or a path length of three. Let's run our code. As you can see, the number of steps to find the one is four before balancing, and the number of steps to find the one after balancing is three. Hopefully this video helped you understand how balancing a binary tree works, if it did, please leave a like. And if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe or check out some of my other videos. Peace.